Lizards, salamanders, and the constellation Lacerti. There are over 7,000 species of lizard and they can be found on every continent except Antarctica As one would expect in a group this large and diverse there is no common symbolism The group includes, for example Chameleons, which have prehensile tails as well as the ability to camouflage themselves. Geckos, which may be only a few centimetres long. And the Komodo dragon, which can be three metres long or ten foot. About the only thing they appear to have in common is their four legs and that strange side-to-side -side walk. But even this would be wrong, as the forest-dwelling Draco lizards glide on wings. And slow worms have no legs, but are classed as lizards. Most lizards are carnivorous, and whilst the smaller ones eat insects, the Komodo dragon will eat mammals as large as a water buffalo. And while some use venom to defend themselves, and this is a gila monster, others have the extraordinary ability to sacrifice and regrow their tails. Their skin, like that of a snake, is covered in scales made of keratin enabling them to survive in deserts, reducing water loss and shielding them from the sun. The tongue is often long and can be used to capture prey. Sense the environment, and this is a Nile monitor. And in those with no eyelids, lick their eyes clean. Whilst the common basilisk can run across water, the marine iguana can swim underwater and feeds on seaweed. Some have brightly coloured dewlaps used in signalling. Their interest in mating, shows of aggression and so on. The chameleon has independent eyes, providing simultaneously different views of its environment. And finally, there are some lizards that have adhesive pads under their toes, made of millions of tiny setae that enable them to climb and stick to surfaces. So lizards are fascinating beautiful, diverse, but are not as a whole symbolic, even though they molt by shedding patches of skin. Constellations There are three constellations that use types of lizard, again indicating there is not one symbolic meaning. Draco, a constellation in the far northern sky, is one of the 48 constellations listed by the 2nd century astronomer Ptolemy and remains one of the 88 modern constellations today. Chameleon is a small constellation in the deep southern sky. It was first defined in the 16th century 
and was one of twelve constellations created by Petrus Plongius. And Lucerta is one of the 88 modern constellations defined by the International Astronomical Union. Lucerta is a species of lizard, but when Johannes Hevelius created the constellation in 1687, he named it Stellio, and the Latin Stellio refers to any spotted lizard. In this star chart, we can see all three constellations, Chameleon, Draco, Lyserta. Is Lyserta a salamander? One type of lizard that seems to be close to Hevelius's idea of a spotted lizard is the salamander. Some salamanders are the colour of fire, a lovely red colour, and the spots cover the body like stars. Salamanders have four legs with toes. As they do in the illustrations for the constellation, although this drawing makes it look more like a weasel. And the tails of salamanders is long and curled. Just as it is shown in Hevelius' drawing for Lacerta. Although sometimes salamanders have faint spots, And sometimes they are more like blotches. And in some, they are almost like stripes. So the likeness is not always that good. And in Hevelius's illustration, the toes and feet are long and thin. Whereas the feet and toes of salamanders are nearly always short and stubby. But some salamanders exhibit biofluorescence, so they almost look as though they represented the stars in the sky. And thus, one would be forgiven for saying, so, the constellation is possibly in celebration of an actual species of lizard. Did Hevelius just choose a type of lizard that reminded him of the night sky? Um, no. Paracelsus and the Elements We have a video called The Elements and the Tarot Suits that introduces the concept of the elements in alchemy. There are four elements, earth, water, air and fire. Paracelsus was a Swiss physician, philosopher and alchemist living in the 16th century, and he promoted the idea that each element has a spirit being that inhabits each realm. Earth, gnomes, water, undines, air, sylphs, fire, salamanders. But Johann Hevelius was Polish and lived from 1611 to 1687. Furthermore, he was principally an astronomer, uninterested in spirit beings called salamanders. Paracelsus was Swiss and lived from 1493 to 1541 and he was fascinated by salamanders. But Paracelsus and Hevelius lived in different centuries and countries and appeared to have nothing in common. But between 1632 to 1634, Hevelius visited Avignon and called on Athanasius Kircher. And Kircher did believe in salamanders. And to understand the effect this visit may have had, we need to know something about Athanasius Kircher and his museum. 
Athanasius Kirke and the Roman College Museum. If a person sought a conference with a learned persons in the mid-17th century, the advice received might very well have been see Father Kirke. Father Athanasius Kirke, 1602-1680, was a Jesuit with a fascination for invention and curiosities. As Jocelyn Godwin says in his book, Athanasius Kirkus Theatre of the World, he was probably the last man to search for universal knowledge. With full permission from the Roman Catholic Church, essential given the trial and condemnation of Galileo's heretical theory of heliocentricity in 1633, Athanasius Kirke set up a museum in the Roman College. Using items obtained from Jesuit global missionary activity as well as Kirke's own extensive research. The frontispiece to the museum's 1678 catalogue showed a black-robed Kirke and his two guests as minuscule figures amidst the museum's apparently immense collection of arcane, occult and seemingly empirical sciences. A single 77-foot-long corridor was set perpendicular to three smaller galleries on the third floor of the Roman College, immediately adjacent to the library, and a series of four obelisks stood at intervals along the centre of the corridor. Each obelisk pointed to an ovoid image in the ceiling, and each ovoid described an element. There is one for earth, one for water, one for air, and one for fire, similar to this one, with a salamander engulfed in flame. Kirkus Museum no longer exists, but we know that his salamander was surrounded by an inscription that read, There is no realm, nor anything, nor any place or region in which is not found written the Tetragrammaton, name of God, down to the last bit of human body and soul. And whoever will know the bond by which the lower is united with the upper world, will discover the mysteries of nature and will become the author of miracles. Hevelius's Observations of the Sun First remember that Hevelius had already been subjected to Kirchhoff's ideas between 1632 to 1634. Gutenberg had invented the printing press in the 1400s and Kirke had written and had printed a lot of books. Now understand that despite being called Selenographia Siva Lunae Descriptio, Evelius's 1647 book also had sunspot and eclipse observations. Fire. Evelius used a telescope that pierced the centre of a ball within a socket, which was mounted on the wall of a darkened chamber, so that an image of the sun could be projected on blue paper pinned to a movable easel. And we can now see what he might have seen. This video from NASA shows salamanders scurrying about in the sun. Hevelius, an astronomer, not a metaphysicist, must have thought he had seen salamanders in fire. And I like to think Hevelius was impressed enough to want to add a constellation in honour of Kirkus' explanation of what he had seen. And since there was no salamander constellation, Hevelius created one. 